Was it an accident or murder? It's been more than 30 years since the media baron Robert Maxwell fell to his death off the back of his yacht, Lady Gislaine, just off the Canary Islands. He was 68 years old, and he was found completely naked. In the days before he died, it seemed that the empire Maxwell had worked decades to build was about to crumble. He had incurred a massive amount of debt that he could not pay. A scandal was about to erupt that would leave him with a label of crook of the century. Could it be that he killed himself because he refused to experience his downfall in person? Or had he made too many enemies that resulted in his murder? After all, there are rumors that he was killed by Mossad, the Israeli intelligence service. The official ruling is that Robert Maxwell suffered a heart attack and drowned. It was an accidental death. But many still wonder if it really is just an unfortunate string of events that took place during a controversial time in Robert Maxwell's life. In this episode, we are digging up the dirt on Robert Maxwell, his life and his death, to see if we can figure out what most likely happened on that fateful day. Who is Robert Maxwell? Robert Maxwell was a media mogul and a self-made millionaire. In fact, he was one of the richest men in Great Britain. But not many in the public knew that he came from a family living in extreme poverty. He was born to a Yiddish-speaking Orthodox Jewish family who lived in a small town of Slatinske Dolly in Czechoslovakia. At the time, the Nazis were ruthlessly laying siege to the country. In 1939, he escaped from the Nazis, went to France, and joined the Czechoslovak army in exile during World War II. Most of his family perished in the Auschwitz concentration camp a few years after his escape. After France fell, Maxwell went to Britain and joined the British army. He was part of the Normandy invasion in 1944, fighting across Europe. Because of his service, he was able to reach the rank of captain. By this time, he had changed his name to Ivan de Maurier. After the war, he was awarded the Military Cross for heroism. In 1945, he worked in the Foreign Office's press section in Berlin. He reportedly carried out espionage work for British intelligence while there. He was also assigned to gather intelligence in Czechoslovakia during the 40s and 50s. Maxwell married a French Protestant, Elizabeth Betty Maynard, with whom he had nine children over the next 16 years. However, only seven made it to adulthood, one of which is the infamous Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's lover and accomplice. In 1946, Maxwell became a naturalized British citizen. In 1948, he officially changed his name to Ian Robert Maxwell. Using his connections in British intelligence, he was able to establish a business as the British and US distributor for a publisher for scientific books known as Springer Verlag. The business was very lucrative, enabling him to buy a small publishing house called Butterworth Springer with Paul Rosbaugh, an experienced scientific editor. They changed the name to Pergamon Press and was able to grow the company into a major publishing house. In 1958, Maxwell entered politics by joining the Labour Party, becoming a member of parliament for Buckingham in 1964. He was re-elected two years later. His goal was to become the Prime Minister of England. Unfortunately, his political dreams would end here. He eventually lost in 1970 and was never able to get his seat back. While Maxwell's political ambitions were unrealized, he was still able to develop and maintain relationships with various political leaders all over the world, including Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and President George Bush. In addition, he continued to be successful in business. Pergamon Press grew bigger and bigger, acquiring other small publishers. It went public in 1964, and Maxwell became a multi-millionaire. A few years later, he tried to buy a weekly tabloid newspaper, News of the World. However, the owner disdained him for being a Czechoslovak immigrant with left-wing views. The paper was eventually bought by Rupert Murdoch, which sparked the decades-long rivalry between the two. In 1969, Maxwell was booted out of his own company by the board due to an accusation of misrepresentation of the company's profits. 
His reputation was badly damaged, but that didn't stop him from rising again. In 1974, Maxwell was able to get his company back and began building his media empire. By 1984, he was able to acquire the struggling Mirror Group, which resulted in headlines proclaiming him as the man who saved the Mirror. From there, he purchased other businesses such as football clubs, foreign television stations, and helicopter businesses. He even acquired a construction company. In 1987, he became the proud owner of the US publisher Macmillan. In 1991, he bought the New York Daily News. Maxwell didn't just put his money in companies. He also became a philanthropist, helping support the people in Ethiopia who were experiencing famine. He also funded the Commonwealth Games. Before Maxwell died, he owned more than 400 companies and several major publications around the world. However, despite appearances, Maxwell had accrued a huge amount of debt. His wealth, which funded his lavish lifestyle, was apparently all a mirage. He was borrowing money from banks to keep the cash flowing in his companies. He also sold some of his companies to pay off debts. Maxwell even had to sell a 49% stake in Mirror Group. Maxwell had also taken out two loans from Goldman Sachs that had a total amount of £50 million, and he had failed to repay the debt. Because of this, the bank started selling shares from the Mirror Group and MCC that it held as collateral. After his death, it was revealed that Maxwell had also taken £460 million out of the pension funds of his companies. Some of the funds were secretly siphoned to his private companies and to the family's trusts in Liechtenstein. Part of the money he loaned from the bank were used to prop up stock prices and keep his empire from collapsing. Knowing that the scandal was just a few days away from being revealed to the public, Maxwell decided to go away for a while for a few days' rest, sailing on his yacht off the coast of the Canary Islands in Spain. On his trip, he played roulette at a local casino, dined out extravagantly, and enjoyed floating in the ocean on his yacht. You could say that it was the perfect break. Maxwell seemed to have been greatly enjoying himself, far away from the troubles that he had left back home. That is, until his staff found him missing from his bedroom one morning. On November 5, 1991, 4.45am, Maxwell had called a crew member to complain about the temperature. He complained that he was too hot. Less than half an hour later, he called to complain about the room being too cold. It is believed that the last words he ever spoke was, turn the air conditioning off. Twelve hours later, a Spanish fisherman discovered his floating body in the Atlantic Ocean, just 15 miles from his yacht. It was recovered by a Spanish helicopter. His body was naked, and there were no signs of violence. According to the records, the yacht left Santa Cruz in the north of the island at 10 p.m. that Monday, the day before Maxwell went missing. It was on its way to Puerto de los Cristianos. However, the body was found 19 to 20 miles from Gando, which was on the other side of the neighboring island of Gran Canaria. This was more than a hundred miles from the obvious route between the departure point and the destination. As to why the body could have gotten that far off course, the authorities did not have any answers. According to the staff, they only discovered that Maxwell was missing when the yacht arrived at Los Cristianos at 9 a.m. However, some claim that the discovery was made much later, around 11 a.m., because Maxwell failed to answer a telephone call to his cabin. It wasn't until 1 p.m. that the alarm was raised by a satellite telex via Norway. Three pathologists performed post-mortem examinations on his body, and they each had different conclusions. One pathologist determined that he had died of a heart attack. Another stated that he had suffered a heart attack and then drowned, while the third pathologist dismissed the heart condition as a cause of death. He believed that Maxwell had simply fallen into the sea and then drowned. With three contradicting and inconsistent conclusions, a flood of theories popped up attempting to explain the true circumstances of Maxwell's death. Some speculate that he jumped off his yacht 
a desperate act to avoid the scandal that was going to blow up in his face as soon as he returned home. But his family, particularly his wife and sons, don't think so. According to them, Maxwell did not have such a temperament. He would never give up because he was a fighter. The Mirror Group editorial director at the time, Charles Wilson, also shared the same sentiments. According to him, Maxwell had too much of the arrogance of his own ability to conceive of such a thing. It's not surprising that they believe this. After all, this was a person who was able to escape from the Nazis when he was just a teenager, joined the Czechoslovak army before becoming a soldier for the British army and earning himself the military cross. From there, he went on to serve as a member of parliament during the 60s and establish a massive fortune in Britain through various enterprises. His meteoric rise in the financial world alone is not something an ordinary person can do. More importantly, this is a person who doesn't seem likely to become depressed and want to escape from everything. More importantly, there were three people who had contact with him the night before who gave testimony as to Maxwell's state of mind at the time. According to son Kevin Maxwell, he had a shouting match with his father the evening before he died. He wanted Maxwell to return to London for an important meeting with the Bank of England over a £50 million default on his debts, but his father refused. Take note that Maxwell was angry, not in despair over what he was facing. A spokesman from the company stated that Maxwell also had a conversation with his son Ian at 11pm that night. They had a normal business and family conversation. Maxwell was, according to the source, in a perfectly good mood. The editor of the Daily Mirror, Richard Stott, also claimed to have spoken to Maxwell that night. He stated that Maxwell had a cold at the time, but he seemed okay. He also mentioned that Maxwell was not depressed about the allegations made against him in Seymour Hersh's book, The Samson Option. In fact, he was incredibly angry and had even sued Hersh because of it. There was also footage retrieved from the yacht showing Maxwell relaxing on board that week. He didn't seem troubled over the possibility of his empire collapsing and his good name going down in flames. Clearly, Maxwell wasn't desperate for a way out of this mess. So, we can rule out as the most likely explanation for his death. Of course, not everyone thought that Maxwell killed himself. Others believe that he was murdered, pushed off his £15 million super yacht in the middle of the night. No one on board the Lady Gislaine saw him tumble from the yacht. The question is, who would kill him? Robert Maxwell has been the subject of many rumours involving espionage. Some speculate that Maxwell was part of Mossad, which he furiously denied. Others went so far as to think that he could have been a double or even a triple agent with connections to the KGB and MI6. After all, this was a man who had knowledge of up to nine languages. Is there any basis to this speculation? Well, shortly before he died, a man claiming to be a former Mossad officer, Ari Ben Manash, told a number of news organizations in the US and Britain that Maxwell was a long-time agent for Mossad. In addition, he stated that in 1986, Maxwell had tipped off the Israeli embassy in London that the nuclear scientist Mordecai Vanuni had given information regarding Israel's nuclear capability to the Sunday Times and the Daily Mirror. This information was also published in Seymour Hersh's book, The Samson Option, which accused both Maxwell and his foreign news editor. According to conspiracy theorists, Maxwell was killed by Mossad because Israel refused to loan him money and he threatened to retaliate. Unfortunately, there is nothing at present that can prove this theory is plausible. What we do know is that Maxwell was a good friend to Israel. He heavily invested in publishing, computer and pharmaceutical companies in the country. There were even some rumors that Maxwell played a big part in the Arab-Israeli War of 1948. He was able to help military aircraft parts get into Israel. When he died, Israel allowed him to be buried on Jerusalem's Mount of Olives with all the pomp and circumstance of a state funeral. Many dignitaries and officials attended, including President Chaim Herzog and Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir, the former delivering the eulogy for Maxwell. 
So the theory that Maxwell had a falling out with Israel and Mossad, which led to his untimely death, doesn't hold much water. Moving on. If not Mossad, would it have been possible for anyone else to kill him? Maybe. Despite all his achievements and accolades, Maxwell also had a dark side. He was a domineering patriarch and a bully. He knew a lot of powerful people, from cabinet ministers to captains of industries. It's quite possible that he had angered someone so badly, which caused that person to push him off the boat, or at least paid someone to do it. After all, everyone who knew him was aware that Maxwell had a habit of urinating over the ship's stern while naked. This could have been a crime of opportunity or premeditated murder. Alas, no evidence was ever found to support this theory, and according to the crew, no one could have gotten on board without their knowledge. More importantly, Maxwell initially planned to go to Bermuda, but he suddenly changed his mind and opted to visit the Canaries. He was also due for a meeting in Israel, as well as a dinner in London, but he decided not to go at the last minute. Maxwell's sudden change of plans would have made it hard for a hit squad to keep up. That's not all. Maxwell was very concerned about his safety. There were security cameras at key points on the Lady Gislaine. His crew were ordered to keep watch on the gangplank whenever the ship was in port. At night, the radar scanned for any approaching vehicle. At night, the radar scanned for any approaching vessels. It would have been incredibly difficult, maybe even impossible, for an assassin or assassins to have come on board the ship, pushed him off the edge, and then escaped without anyone seeing or hearing. Well, what about an inside job? According to the magistrate in Tenerife, Isabel Oliva, there was nothing suspicious about the crew, and there was nothing on Maxwell's body that would indicate an assault. Looks like murder is off the list. So, could it really be accidental? The autopsy showed that he had been suffering from serious heart and lung conditions. And according to those who knew him, Maxwell would get up at night to pee over the stern of the ship. The railings of the yacht were reportedly just made out of wire. Maxwell was a top-heavy man, weighing 140 kilograms. If he had had a heart attack while standing at the stern of the ship, it's quite possible that he fell into the water and subsequently drowned. What most likely happened to Robert Maxwell was an unfortunate accident. According to the police, his door was bolted from the outside, indicating that Maxwell had left his room at some point. Based on previous behavior, he most probably had gone to the rear of the boat to pee. Maxwell was in poor health, so it's possible that he did have a heart attack, which caused him to fall. Alternatively, he could have just lost his balance. It was a windy night. The yacht was probably rolling, so Maxwell might have stumbled off the edge. According to reports, his body was found with the arms up and hands clenched. It was also discovered that there was some muscle tearing on the left side of his body. It's easy to imagine that when he fell, he held onto the chain railing to keep himself from going into the ocean. But he couldn't hold on. The fear and stress at the time might have pushed his heart to the limit, causing him to die before he even hit the water, which could explain why one pathologist stated that Maxwell didn't drown. Robert Maxwell, a global media magnet, had left an indelible impression on the minds of the public. We can't deny that his death is a fascinating mystery that might never be solved. While we choose to believe that it was accidental, we're open to explore other theories you have. So please share any facts and details you know in the comments below. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.